Good morning. I'm Stephen Tan, Chair of Soda Foundation from Creatureway. With me today, I'm honored to have um, Tomoko Kondo from SoftBank and Case Kusunoki from Entity Communications, who's also the uh, TOC co chair. Today, we'll be sharing what Soda Foundation is about and how we help organizations with their data and storage challenges. The Soda Foundation is a project that's charted under the Linux Foundation. It focuses on data and storage management. The project itself was uh, launched in June of uh, last year. And there are three um, key missions that we try to achieve. One is to foster an ecosystem of open source data and storage of software for open data autonomy. And to offer a neutral forum for cross projects collaboration and integration and provide end users with um, quality end to end solutions. These are the organizations um, you see on the screen that are supporting um, the foundation and you can see that within the, sub, uh, within the um, members and supporters, there are um, many um, Japanese companies. And besides that, uh, we also have partnerships with um, various uh, other organizations like um, SNEA, the uh, Storage Networking Industry Association, uh, Open Infrastructure Foundation, and so on. And, with, and within Japan itself, we are also, part, we are also honored to have this uh, partnership with the Japan Data Storage Forum. So Soda Foundation is our uh, end user focused. End users drive the Soda roadmap and provide guidance on direction and opportunities. The Soda um, projects are designed for end users and, and some of the um, Soda end users represent um, the largest organizations and most innovative companies in the world. Together, they provide guidance to SODA by providing real world use cases and requirements. And SODA provides a nuclear forum for them to address data and storage challenges together. So I'm going to be discussing about two um, key challenges that um, organizations face today. Um, the first part is Infrastructure is complex. And what do I mean by that? So infrastructure often span multiple data centers, multiple clouds, and sometimes the edge. And this create challenges in monitoring and control of data and storage. So the challenges are um, capacity optimization, having redundant or obsolete data that's uh, taking up storage that's not um, optimized. Um, storing data in the right place for application performance and identifying critical data that needs to be protected or secure. And some, these are just a few of the challenges and there are many, many more that um, we could go on. Uh, we believe the solution lies in the open data framework that we have built that it provides a centralized view and control, connecting storage to containers, to VMs, and other platforms. Uh, this framework provides data and storage services such as a uh, block file and object storage, backup and recovery, and security and compliance, and so on. The whole idea is to unify data and storage across diff across the core, the cloud, and the edge with a single framework to provide centralized view and control. This diagram shows what the uh, open data framework architecture is about. The open data framework architecture provides an open API for integration with platforms and integrations. It offers plugins for seamless integration with Kubernetes, OpenStack, and VMware, and uses pro storage profiles for uh, policy-based storage provisioning, data protection, data lifecycle, and other data management functions. Storage connect to the dock 
through the uh, through CSI, Swordfish, and uh, the OpenStack Manila Cinder interfaces. And the performance can be monitored together using the Soda dashboard. Multi-cloud controller offers access to the uh, various cloud services through a single S3 interface, enabling operations such as uh, cloud tiering, cloud backup, and so on. So with open data framework, users can easily build end-to-end -end solutions with any storage, any platform, and any cloud. The open data framework connects with other projects in the Soda ecosystem that you see here to provide end-to-end -end solutions. Uh, let's go through uh, briefly what each of these uh, projects are about. So Yi is a project that's uh, developed by China Unicom. It is a massively scalable uh, object storage that can scale to exabyte level um, using Ceph clusters on its backend. This is project is in a production use at China Unicom, storing um, a few petabytes of data at the moment. Next is uh, the DAOs project um, that's developed by Intel. DAOs is a distributed asynchronous object storage and it is a project that leverages our uh, NVM technology to provide high bandwidth and high IOPS uh, storage to containers and applications. Lean Store is a project uh, that's developed by Limbit. Lean Store provides um, makes building, running, and controlling block storage simple with support for um, Kubernetes. Open Nebula, OpenStack, and OpenShift. OpenEBS is a container-based uh, attached storage providing dynamic persistent volumes that's designed for uh, cloud-native environments. OpenEBS is a CNCF um, sandbox project developed by Maya Data, um, and it's been recently, which has recently been acquired by uh, Data Core. And Zenko is a project that's developed by Scality. It is an open source uh, infrastructure software designed to control data in multi-cloud um, environments using a single S3 interface. Cortex is an open source distributed object storage designed for great efficiency, massive capacity, and high HDD utilization. It supports HDD, SSD and MVM. Cortex is designed by um, Seagate. So for all these projects that I've just introduced in the uh, Soda ecosystem, you can go to the uh, Soda Foundation website to find out more about them. The second challenge many organizations are facing is data growth explosion. And what do I mean by that? You can see that in the whole world, back in 2010, we created two zettabytes of data. And now at, in 2020, 2021, we are at a point where we are around 50 zettabytes of data. That's 25X from 10 years ago. And within the next few years, this data is expected to be triple, more than triple, to 175 zettabytes. So how is this data generated, or who creates this data? Or how fast is this data growing? You can see from this chart. This chart shows what's happening every minute of every day. Um, most of these are popular applications that we use every day. And um, for organizations, they may not necessarily be dealing with this data, but they have their own um, data that they deal with from their AI and machine learning applications, from their big data applications, from their enterprise software and so on. 
So where do this all this data sit? So the reality is that with so much data, data is scattered everywhere. There may be stored. They may be stored in the um, Google Cloud, in AWS Cloud, or there may be some data center in London, San Francisco, and so on. So this creates a bunch of problems, like to connect to Google Cloud and AWS Cloud, they use different interfaces. And also if you need to connect to the data center, how are you going to connect to it? And the data in each of these uh, different locations creates some data silos. So it's hard to extract value or um, analyze data from all these different silos. And there's a lot of um, unnecessary uh, data transfers that will take place because of um, the different locations. You may have to gather them in some location, some somewhere central. And also it's difficult to secure and govern the data across different clouds and different locations and, and so on, the list goes on. So how do you solve these problems? The solution is a virtual data lake. The benefits of data lake is that it allows all these applications to connect to the data using a single common interface. It provides a unified view of the data from all the different sources, data stays in place, and it allows better security and governance because everything goes to a single uh, single common interface and with the virtual data lake the integration and deployment of our applications will be faster because you don't need to connect to a different to the different backends every time you want to deploy something and also that's going to be better performance because of um, shorter latencies and it's going to be highly versatile and more scalable so we have started this uh, Soda Lake project uh, discussion um, in the Soda community. And this is uh, a high level blueprint of what the um, Soda Lake is, uh, um, is about. It provides a common S3 interface for um, the different uh, applications. There's gonna be a global metadata uh, to source of the info for um, the data from the different clouds. There's going to be a search engine to provide a data search and discovery, a cache engine to speed, speed up performance, uh, identity and uh, IAM for access control and compliance, logs and metrics for audit and monitoring. Um, that's good. The backend is going to be a uh, highly scalable, um, supporting uh, heterogeneous kind of uh, storage and it also provides um, connectivity to um, any cloud. So if you're if you're interested in um, participating in this project, um, please um, join our discussion at the uh, Soda Foundation uh, Slack, Soda Lake channel. <clears throat> so with this, uh, this is the end of my talk. Um, next, um, we'll have um, Kundo-san introducing um, the, some of the uh, data lake uh, use cases. And after that, um, Kusunaki-san will be uh, introducing um, more about uh, so that another um, project uh, use case and also some of the um, activities in the uh, Japan community. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Now let us begin. Thank you for your time today. I'm Tomoko Kondo from SoftBank. I like to talk about the virtual data lake using Soda Lake. Let's go to my slide. First, let me introduce myself. I work in the cloud engineering division and the enterprise product and business division. I'm charged of developing solutions and promoting open source strategy as a cloud engineer and developing solution patterns for each industry's challenges as a business planner. 
My first encounter with open source was GNU. Linux has been my favorite operating system since the moment I met it. I look forward to joining the Linux Foundation and participating in the SODA project. Second, I'd like to introduce you SoftBank. We have three basic strengths. First is network. Second is data center. Third is access devices. Smart VPN is our main cross network. Smart VPN connect partner core cloud through the direct access. Smart VPN connect SoftBank data center. Smart VPN has connecting interface to internet backbone and mobile network backbone. And Smart VPN connect customer data center. By using access devices, we can easily connect cloud world. We can connect everything with network. We can connect users to various channels and services through the network. Of course, we can access a lot of data in the world. Our mission is to solve business and social challenges with data transformation. We support to achieve data transformation and provide full infrastructures required for digitalization. First is communication. Second is digital automation. Third is marketing. Last is security. We solve social challenges through co-creation with business and public agencies. There are several use cases. Today, i like to talk about smart building. Our headquarters is a model building for smart buildings with over 1,000 sensors installed in the building and based on the collected data, cleaning robots operate, application work together, and the environment is automatically adjusted to make it easier for people to spend time. When I want to eat sandwiches, which, over like, which working over time, I order sandwiches at a convenience store then a cute delivery robot bring me sandwiches. I am enjoying every day. We continue collect a lot of data from any place. Data supply a lot of supplies and comfortable environment and evolution. I like to our uh, motivation to soda. How data is used is a key to all evolution. Everyone wants to be able to easily access scattered data from any foyer using the same interface while keeping security. I believe in soda is architecture with the highest expectations for achieving this. Let's go next slide. This slide is very important slide. I like to talk about virtual data lake use case. This use case has two points. One point is soda lake controller and soda lake agent. Other point is using carriers network and carriers data center. Customers can take advantage of customer-specific virtual data lake from any foyer 
by simply installing a Soda Lake agent into their application and connecting to a Soda Lake controller in the carrier data center. Let's look at the diagram in this slide. We supply the Soda Lake controller for each of customer in the carrier data center. Users can download Soda Lake agent from their Soda Lake controller. For example, customer A, customer A has storage object in their satellite office, AWS, and Azure. Their Soda Lake controller manages these storage as single virtual data lake. Customers, users can use their own virtual data lake from any place by simply Soda Lake agent into their application. In addition to Soda Lake's ERM and access control features, carrier data centers can connect cloud storage and customer data centers with a cross network. This means that users can take advantage of virtual data lake in the private network. So we can implement the secure virtual data lake by using Soda Lake and Carrier's network and Carrier's data center. I believe this use case become very useful case. This is summary page. By providing virtual data lake services implemented in Soda Lake by carriers, we believe we can further accelerate large scale data transformation. There are many similar services, so we need to have a deep discussion on whether this hypothesis is really a good use case for Soda Lake. We also need to work out technical specifications for actual implementation from various viewpoints. For example, latency, and speed, and a comfortable user interface, and so on. First, we want to validate the usefulness of this hypothesis and we go to be able to start a POC together as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. So hello, Open Source Summit Japan participants. I'm Keiko Sunoki. Technical Oversight Committee co-chair in Soda Foundation. And also I'm working on NTT communications as an infrastructure engineer. So today I'd like to talk about the Japan community briefly. So let, uh, let's go to my slide. So first of all, uh, let me introduce myself firstly. I'm Keik Sunoki. I joined uh, to Soda Foundation from 2020, and I'm contributing uh, SODA uh, through many technical discussion, uh, such as uh, architecture matter or uh, some kind of the basic requirement, technical requirement as the storage service provider's perspective. And also I'm leading the Japan community. So that's why I'd like to show our activity in Japan today. So, and also I'm just engineer. So I'm working on the, some kind of the R and D uh, matter about the storage cloud. And also I developed the private cloud storage services in NTT communications. So uh, this is me. And uh, before the 
Japan Committee introduction, uh, let me introduce our motivation, NDD Communications motivation to SODA. So here is our motivation. So NDD Communication provides smart data platform, SDPF. It's very um, complicated platform. Uh, this is kind of the micro service architecture. As you can see in the diagram, we are offering uh, private cloud, public cloud uh, by our partners, uh, such as uh, Google and Azure. And also uh, we are offering uh, storage services. And uh, basically NTT is a network service provider. So of course we are providing uh, many network service. Uh, Inter this data center network and the cruise network, wired network, and the also internet network and the mobile network. So, based on uh, this infrastructure, uh, we are offering many solutions and also application in our smart data platform. So, our end user customer can use many solutions through these applications. Uh, such as, uh, uh, you know, ID service management services or subscription services or some kind of the AI service, voice service, DX, some kind of that. And uh, besides that, uh, we are offering uh, orchestration service, man managed services, security services. So in this uh, platform, we need uh, open data storage management by Soda. So currently our data management, storage management is, uh, is uh, it's a kind of the uh, original one. So we write uh, the, these closed data management software uh, in-house. This is in-house software. So of course, API is closed one. So our end user cannot use that. And also this closed API cannot be used from other platform such as VMware, OpenStack, Kubernetes. So it's really huge disadvantage on current cloud era. So we really desire such kind of the open data storage management. So if we can use Soda in our data platform, uh, of course, Soda can have uh, some kind of uh, good capability for this environment, uh, VMware, OpenStack, and also uh, Soda can use uh, many multiple storage services, uh, ISKG, NFS, objects, and also Soda have some, to some extent, interoperability uh, with traditional storage appliance. We are using such kind of the storage appliance, uh, such as NetApp. So we need uh, such kind of the open storage controller in our platform. So the image is that. So if we can use Soda besides our storage here, so our API, um, our applications can use Soda through open API and also our storage orchestrator, our provisioning orchestrator can use Soda through open API. So it can enable us to accelerate our uh, system development. So it's, it's really helpful for us to reduce our development costs. Yeah, and, and also end user can enjoy our storage service through uh, Soda API. It's really good benefit for us and our end user. So this is our motivation. So, okay, so next I, I'd like to show Japan community matter. So this is Japan community. As you can see in the photos, uh, we Japan community have many members uh, official members, Toyota, Yahoo Japan, Fujitsu, Sony, Seagate, and us, Energy Communications. And also unofficially, we have IBM and SoftBank. Uh, so we are discussing uh, many actual use cases. 
uh, with uh, these members. And uh, before COVID-19, we had many meetup events in Japan. So, and in that, these, in the, those events, we had many technical discussion about the uh, concrete use case or uh, technical requirement uh, from end user perspective. And uh, through this discussion, online offline discussion, uh, we aggregated uh, some kind of the technical requirement. And uh, we, uh, we provide these requirement or use cases, scenario, solution to SODA community. That is a brief explanation for our Japan community. Yeah. So here is a memorial photo uh, about the two years ago event. So the forum, uh, 2019, uh, just before COVID-19 pandemic, we had the local meetup event in Japan. So we had many participants from global. So, uh, and also, um, yeah, actually in next year, uh, upcoming event, uh, we are, we're gonna have an uh, upcoming event in Japan. So yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to see you guys next year. So, okay. So uh, after here, I showed uh, the brief explanation for our Japan community. So uh, here, I'd like to show a typical use case uh, from Yahoo Japan. Uh, Yahoo Japan is a large service provider in Japan. Yahoo Japan has a concrete use case um, about soda. So here is an overview image. There are overview image about the uh, soda use case. So in Yahoo Japan, uh, storage users will request some kind of the daily storage operation. So maybe storage user wanna make the volume, uh, create a bucket. And uh, so in this system, uh, storage user will submit some kind of the request ticket. Uh, so currently um, the ticketing system is dealing with this request and the storage admin uh, will operate this kind of daily routine uh, operation uh, following these request ticket, but uh, they want to replace this ticketing system to SODA. So if SODA can work with their in-house software user interface, uh, SODA can work with uh, this system uh, by OpenAPI. So once storage user request uh, some volume creation, for example, so that can automatically provision the volume uh, on the on-premise file storage and uh, object storage. This is an overview of Yahoo Japan's use case. So, uh, and uh, let me introduce uh, object storage concrete user scenario. So if end user wanna put the object uh, to SODA, SODA will expose just a single endpoint for end users. End user realize only SODA single endpoint, then end user will put object to this SODA endpoint. Then SODA endpoint, uh, yeah, this is uh, the component, one component of SODA, uh, March Cloud. The Mar so the March Cloud component will deal with this object uh, following the pre-configured policy. So, oh, storage admin, Yahoo Japan storage admin can configure these policies uh, into Soda. And following this policy, this object D will be forwarded to this storage B. So this storage B has a direct endpoint. Soda will up, upload, put uh, this object D to storage B, direct endpoint. But 
uh, dear end user, don't realize, don't see this direct endpoint of storage B. So the benefit of that is user don't need to care this kind of the uh, endpoint matter. So if end user directly uploads the object to this direct endpoint, and actual end user need to care the direct endpoint. So, but the uh, storage admin wanna replace storage for some reason in upcoming year or maybe 10 years later. But uh, if storage admin renew, uh, renew these storages, uh, storage admin need to change this direct endpoint. But the uh, end user don't wanna care of that. So they don't want to change their code. So if Soda can abstract these actual storage endpoint layer, uh, end user, real end user don't need to care this uh, endpoint matter. So that is the main benefit from this solution. Okay, so uh, recent activity. So to achieve this concrete use case uh, scenario, uh, we had many technical discussion uh, between Yahoo Japan team, Japan community supporters team, and also uh, Soda development community team. So uh, we had many discussion. So through this discussion, uh, we had many challenging matter. Uh, for example, objects how so the March crowd handle deal with uh, object storage endpoint among the actual soda endpoint and uh, uh, actual on-premise object storage and also authentication matter. It's very complicated. So Yahoo Japan need to achieve March energy. So yeah, so that so that don't need don't uh, so that need to care this kind of the March energy. So each user need to belong to each tenant and, uh, and this tenant level, so that need to deal with object storage secret key. So such kind of the, uh, many technical challenging matter was uh, block items. So we had many technical discussion to resolve these issues. But uh, yeah, we already did this POC as a result, uh, Yahoo team confirmed this use case with uh, Soda J bug release. This is a, a previous release. Yeah. So this is the uh, recent activity of uh, so, Soda Japan community. Okay, so up to here, uh, I showed uh, some kind of the brief explanation about the Japan community, but the finally, uh, I'd like to show some promotion about uh, our event. So we are gonna have a virtual hackathon event. It's named Soda Code. So it's kind of the virtual hackathon event. Uh, it's the first coding event by Soda Foundation. So we are expecting uh, many challenging development topics in Soda project. So, uh, please uh, visit this uh, URL and see the, uh, some kind of the uh, information about this event. Please uh, join this event, yeah. So that's all from my side. So thank you so much for uh, hearing my presentation. So thank you, bye.